Hi, I'm Mike. Every Saturday during the summer and well into October, both Aaron and I get to work really hard to get ourselves to farmer's market. Okay, she works a little bit harder than I do, but I still help. Today, we head from the ranch to market on our Wyoming life. <laughs> Diversification is the key to the ranch. Without it, we wouldn't be able to raise cattle. And without Farmer's Market, well, there'd never been a YouTube channel called Our Wyoming Life. You see, back in the very beginning, the whole reason for us putting out our very first video on YouTube was to serve one simple purpose. I made one simple four and a half minute video to make Aaron happy. Back then, we knew that Farmer's Market was the key to the, to the success of the ranch cows are expensive. The profit margin can be pretty thin. And we originally hoped that by putting a few videos on YouTube, we could help improve farmer's market sales by showing our customers what goes into getting products to them. From the gardens, we could show how Aaron chooses crops, grows, and harvests them. And from the ranch, I could detail the extra work that we put in to bring locally raised beef and pork to our community. The first video we posted was all about feeding the cows and we were extremely lucky to find that it wasn't just our local customers who wanted to know more about where their food came from, but people all across the world. Of course, that didn't mean that our message changed. Yeah, we tweaked it a little bit, but we still do exactly what we were doing when we started, going to farmer's market. Thanks for coming along today. I'm just getting done in the field, quitting a little bit early for the day. Farmer's Market is tomorrow, and yes, even though Farmer's Market is 90% Aaron's baby, we work together every week to pull the whole thing together. Along with the veggies Aaron picks and washes from the gardens for Farmer's Market every week, she also works in the kitchen all day on Friday to bring a variety of baked goods as well. Even at market, we diversify. Obviously, not all vegetables are in season at the same time, and baked goods round out the most visible part of our farmer's market booth, along with beef and pork. Aaron and I have been doing this long enough that we both know which jobs we take on. She's the brains of the operation. And sometimes, well, I'm more along the line of manual labor, but we all have our strengths. And for me, it's a fun change of pace. There are also a few perks, like taste testing new products. And well, that's the big one. I'm sure there are more, but that one really sticks in my mind. So as baked goods cool, I get to one of my jobs, and that's wrapping and packaging. From zucchini and banana bread, to coffee cake, to cinnamon rolls, everything gets packaged and labeled. A new addition here recently, and one that I personally approve of, has been carrot cake. So popular that each week this year, Erin has been upping the amount that she takes and it's still not enough. We never get to bring home leftovers. It's the curse of the market. All the really good stuff sells out. And unless I fork over my three bucks early, my fork isn't going anywhere near this stuff nowadays. All of our baked goods are packaged into totes for easy transport. Then it's out to Aaron's Farmer's Market truck, a 1998 GMC box truck that's been repurposed after a few hundred thousand miles and fitted with freezers to hold all of our cuts of beef and pork that we take to market. This week, Aaron also made ice cream, so we load that up tonight as well. We're nowhere near ready to go to market. There's still lots to load. But getting started on Friday night gives us a little leg up, and tomorrow morning we'll hit it again early, because not only is Saturday Farmer's Market, it's also a very special Farmer's Market. This week is National Farmer's Market Week, and the market that Aaron helps manage along with Megan and Hannah was honored as being included as one of the National Farmer's Market Coalition's 10 featured markets in the United States. That's a big deal, at least it sounds like it. And it's cool to be a part of it. Even if my part includes packing around hundreds of pounds of vegetables. 
First though, our baked goods go in the truck. Then we head into the shop where the peacock is waiting for us as he does every single morning. From there, it's into the kitchen where the market fridge awaits. Along with kale, rainbow chard, kohlrabi, beets, potatoes, dill, and who knows what else. And so much summer squash and zucchini that, that I can't help but weigh it. 123 pounds worth. Once the truck is loaded down with everything, including a generator to run the ice cream freezer, we can close it up, raise the lift gate, and hit the road. Market starts at 8, so we leave the ranch about 6.30 to make sure we have plenty of time to set up. And a few minutes later, we arrive at the Gillette Technical College parking lot, where the market takes place. Market really is a team effort. I can see why Aaron likes it so much. Working on the ranch, you get used to being by yourself and getting things done. But here, the definite message is that we help each other out. As tents and tables start emerging from the truck, hands appear from everywhere to help out. And soon, things are taking shape. Here we divide and conquer, as Aaron starts setting up the vegetables and I take care of the baked goods. Price tags are put out, and soon the crown is growing, waiting for market to open. Vendors can't sell until 8 a.m. to make it fair and make sure everybody is set up, but right at 8 a.m., the bell rings and it's time to get to work, again. After working all week on the ranch, with only the cows and myself to talk to sometimes, it's nice to get out and hang out with people in the real world. Each and every week, we have our regular customers. We also have new customers, travelers, and many other folks that move through our booth. Between you and me, I think Erin loves it when somebody comes in and says that her carrot cake is the best they've ever had or that her veggies are to die for. And good for her. When it comes down to it, she does a lot to make sure that not only us, but tons of other vendors have a place to sell their products, to advertise their business and diversify their own business. And that's pretty special. And when someone says they love the zucchini bread or the rolls, or Grandma Betty's cookies, I can say that I helped package them. Time flies when you're busy, and it's not long until things begin to run out. Beets go first, then turnips, then chard. Broccoli is whittled down, and most baked goods fly out of the tent. And when the market ends at 1230, the place is looking pretty bare. Another great thing that Aaron and her cohorts have set up at market is a Share the Harvest program, where unsold produce can be sold to farmer's market itself. Then the market donates it to local food programs. Today, Aaron donates five pounds of tomatoes, 23 pounds of squash, and three pounds of kale. Everything that's left. Of course, leftover baked goods, will they head home with us? And then it's time to break down and load it all back up in the truck. Again, the help comes out in droves, as vendors help each other take down their tables, tents, and load everything back up to be used next week. And just like that, another week in market is over. The culmination of a week's worth of work for Aaron and a few hours of work for me. But I can honestly say that weeks that I miss farmer's market for one reason or another, I truly do miss it.
Thanks for coming along with us today. Uh, the truck is back home, it's plugged in, and now it's back to work for me. Those hay bales, well, they're not gonna make themselves. I do really like Farmer's Market, and getting a chance to talk directly to customers is amazing. I also like to think that giving consumers of our products a chance to talk directly to the person that grew that vegetable or raised that beef or pork is pretty important. Erin can tell you every step of a zucchini's life, what she did and when she did it. And I can spout off facts about every piece of beef and pork that we have in this truck. Maybe it's not for everybody, but personally, I like knowing when, how, and where my food was raised or grown. If I see an ingredient I can't pronounce, I get a little worried. And I'd love to know why strawberry flavor just can't come from strawberries and not a mess of chemicals. Again, thanks for coming out with us today. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary three times per week right here on YouTube. Check out our podcast everywhere that you find your favorite podcasts. All you have to do is search for Beyond the Ranch. We'll be back on Tuesday as we take another shot at the project list. And until then, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.